Warning, there are spoilers ahead for Avengers Endgame. If you've seen the movie, then you're a. If not, then you're a. The video begins in 3, 2, 1. The next thing I had in mind was going on to the the trouble with time and how the time travel is, I, th I think, a little confusing a bit, especially okay, in the beginning. Yeah. Like, uh, what was it that Banner said? He said, you can't just simply go back in time and change something and then it'll fix the future because now that the act of going back in time is your future. Yeah, it's like the, if uh, you like, travel well, back uh, in time, that past now becomes your future, right? Right. I don't really get that. So so basically what he's saying is uh, time isn't like a straight line. You know, you go back in time, you're not going to like change you, so you're not going to change your past. You're changing that version of the past. You're basically making a copy of the pre-existing time frame and then changing that. Okay. So that that's sort of the way they explain it, which doesn't really make too much sense. It would mean that time just doesn't work the way anyone thinks it works. Um, Meaning if you go back in time, it alters something, it won't affect the future? Yeah, yeah, that's basically what they're saying with that. So, uh... <laughs> It, so that's why, and, and I, I wrote a list of bullet points here. These were things that I was all thinking about. Um, like, okay, so they, they get all the Infinity Stones at various times that they know where they'll be. Uh, nothing is different when they have them in the present, because I think they have Tony Stark's funeral, and then he brings all the stones back, right? Right. Yeah, so nothing seemed to be changed from not bringing them back right away. Yeah, so Although I, I guess I, I the future see... of, of him would be returning them all to where they were, which... I don't know how he did because they seem pretty hard to get. But that aside, I could I could ignore so, that. Just, so I mean, he, yeah, he I, I I don't mind that part of it. I I, I do mind. Like I, I guess um it does bug me. Uh, like why would he have to return the stones if nothing he did in the past could affect the future? You know, like uh, I I don't know that 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 just whole thing about time travel kind of uh, bugs me. And that's sort of why they had all of the uh, movie references about how time travel was done wrong and all of these uh famous sci-fi movies. <laughs> Um, I think maybe that was to just say, we're not going to follow any of those rules, so don't even try to apply that logic here. Because I'm trying to apply it, and I, it just doesn't work. Because they, they bring all the stones back, so I guess nothing would change. They say they return them to the moment that they were taken. But then that means if the, the past wasn't supposed to be changed, then Thanos would still go and get the ball, and then all the events of Infinity War would still happen? Yeah, so that's what I'm sort of assuming, that um, basically all the events of the MCU still happened as they happened, but because of the events of Endgame, uh, those events still happen, but uh, now a different version, I don't know, it's sort of hard to explain without like really getting down a temporal uh, wormhole. Well, okay, past Thanos, before he gets the stones, comes to the future, and then, you know, Iron Man, him out of existence, so he, do he doesn't go back. And therefore, he does not exist anymore from that point that he came from the past on. Right, but that version of Thanos. So basically, they recreated, like, by traveling back in time, they essentially created a paradox, which created a second timeline, which in which that version of Thanos came to the future, or our version of the future. And then, yeah, that's basically what we saw play out. But before my brain fully falls out of my ears, um, Captain America's ending. So... Uh, after he goes and re returns all the stones, which we don't see, that's off screen, he's supposed to come back, but then he doesn't, except he does, but he's old. He's an old man, old man Cap, he's sitting on a bench, and we find out he's lived his life, and he lived his life back in the 1940s with Peggy. How does that not make huge impacts on anything? She was like the uh, major uh, person in S.H.I.E.L.D., right? Yeah, I mean, especially when you consider... Like, the whole thing about the past not affecting the future, why wouldn't he have gone to that version of the past timeline? I, I don't know. It, it, like, again, it just creates so many different things about this timeline that really don't make sense. Yeah. Um, and what about Loki escaping with the Tesseract? Did, is that undone, or is it is it permanent? And I, Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sort of leaning... Well, I'm sort of leaning in the camp. Like, we know they're going to make a Loki TV series for Disney+, Plus, so I'm assuming that that version of Loki survived the events of Infinity War, or, like, I, I don't know. It, it, it's like, if I really had to put it in words, like, there basically exists a second version of the MCU timeline at this point, but one where the events of Endgame affected it profoundly. 
uh, rather than our current future. Right. Um, so I'm assuming that version of Loki is still alive, as opposed to our version of Loki, which died by Thanos' hand at the beginning of Infinity War. Um, so, you know, is there potential for that Loki to come over to ours? Who knows? So basically, the way you see it is there's two MCU timelines now. One where Infinity War happened, and one where it didn't, and a bunch of stuff is different. Yeah, I mean, basically, like, I mean, for all we know, that second timeline that was created because of their time traveling antics, uh, Infinity War could or could not have happened. But um, or maybe it's a different timeline in each separate uh, event that they altered. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it sort of goes down to the Doctor Strange logic of it all, you know, like, uh, basically, there's an infinite amount of timelines, infinite amount of realities. Um, you know, it, I, I think, again, with that character in the mix uh that gives us the potential to see some of these other timelines um mm. and you know I, I think that's basically what happens like they they couldn't affect their timeline because it would have stopped them from tampering with their timeline in the first place so they tampered with another timeline you know um i, I don't know that's sort of my understanding of the whole thing as it stands right now that's the thing about time travel, Barry. The more you do it, the less it applies, the less logic it applies. Yep, you'll never be able to put that cup perfectly back together. Except, you know, in this one, you sort of can. I don't know. Well, as far as the main timeline that we see, the one that we care about, that is, um, the people who are dead permanently, it seems, are... I, I was, I was going to say, Nebula from the past-ish, who went to the I, future? Did, I guess How did that she not disappear Nebula? if she killed her past self? I, again, that sort of supports the whole two timelines thing, but... Uh, yeah, okay, okay, so th this isn't time overwrites itself, this is just new stuff is created. I guess think of time more like a it, physical it's a space. Copy. It's a copy rather than, like, our timeline. It's yeah. a copy of our timeline to that Okay, point. so so original Nebula is still around. Um... Gamora, the original one, is dead, but the copy is alive. Right. So she doesn't have the relationship with Star Lord. Yeah. So I, I don't know how they're gonna work that in with the Guardians three. Yeah, which again, it sort of imply that she could still exist in some form in like because you know we see at the very end of uh, Endgame that Star Lord's still searching for her in some capacity, which you know I, I really think that uh, the fact that she exists in the Soul World uh, implies that she's still alive in some form in the main timeline. So who knows? Maybe that'll Maybe. be the plot of Guardians Three. Um, yeah, that goes into my other point, which was I was going to say Black Widow, Scarlett Johansson, dead. Yep, yep, she's dead, dead for good. So the movie that about her is obviously going to be a prequel of some form. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm assuming right now. Like, unless it happened for the five years during the snap, which would be kind of boring because it seemed like she was basically a bureaucrat at that point. Yeah, um, um, yeah I'm guessing Vision it's going to be a prequel. Still dead. Vision's still dead, which there's going to be a WandaVision TV series, too. So um, I, I guess that's going to be during the time they spent during in between uh, Civil War and Infinity War when they really became a couple. I guess um, so. Yeah, I mean, it'd be weird to do it in any other way. Uh, and then uh, Idris Elba, Heimdall, he's still dead, I guess. Yeah, which, who really cares, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Him and, I guess, half of Asgard. Yeah, I mean, they're staying gone. And then Loki, we, we, we don't know. I, I think pretty much, I, I'm pretty sure he's dead at this point, main version Loki. Like, I, I feel like if he had somehow survived the, like, if, if that was a copy or a clone or something that uh, Thanos had killed, I feel like... Uh, Real Loki would have come back by now, but uh, that yeah. doesn't appear to be the case. And Iron Man is dead. <laughs> yeah, for good. Mm -hmm. But again, like we have time travel now, so is anyone really dead? <laughs> you see, that's the thing. No one's ever really gone. So, I mean, that's probably the biggest thing that bugs me about them having access to time travel now. It just opens so many possibilities that would essentially just dampen the impact that some of these character deaths had. Um, well, I, I, not really for me, because like you said, if if they're all separate uh, realities or whatever you want to, however you want to think of them, then I think this one is how it is. But I, you know, they could write whatever they want for the future. Maybe they'd renegoti renegotiate a contract or two. It'd be like, hey, uh, Robert Downey Jr., movie's not doing as well as they did. Yeah, you want to come back to a little cameo? We'll write it in somehow. What you just saw was a clip from our full show, The Utterly Nonsense Podcast, which airs every Friday. So click any of the links on the screen or subscribe if you want to see videos similar to this one. And let us know in the comments what you think. 
Thanks for listening.